After my setup build video, I got a lot of questions from people about what items they should focus on when it comes to upgrading their setups. So I thought let's make a follow-up video with my list of the most important items for your setup for programming and productivity. And if you're someone in the process of doing some upgrades, then hopefully this video will give you inspiration on what to focus on. I'll also be throwing in some nice-to-haves and quality-of-life improvements if you're just looking to take your existing setup to the next level. Now the base for your setup is obviously going to be your desk. And some things I look for in a good one is that first of all, the desk needs to be deep enough for me to rest my hands on it. With one of my previous desks, I had my arms kind of hanging off the desk, which thankfully didn't give me any major issues since I switched away from it quite quickly, but that can actually mess up your shoulders and neck as well as your overall posture. So just make sure you focus on the depth of the desk and not the width. For context, I'm 6'2 and my desk is 80 centimeters or around 31 and a half inches deep, and for me this works perfectly. Also another thing that's a must with your desk is to make sure that the legs are sturdy. Trust me, there's nothing more annoying than having a wobbly desk and literally nothing made my blood boil as much as trying to work on a desk like that. In general, I'd recommend going for a sit-stand desk, but if you're on a budget, then the legendary Alex drawers from Ikea will also do fine. And when it comes to the overall aesthetic of the setup, make sure the cable management is clean. This is one of the highest return on investment things you can do for your setup at a low cost. So for my cable management setup, here's kind of what I got going on. This is pretty intimate, just me and you under my desk. Oh, sounded way better in my head actually. Anyways, for my cable management, I pretty much just have this rack and all of my cables are inside of there without almost any thought about it. And I only have this one cable coming out of my setup. So at least to the outside, this looks clean. And one of my favorite setup upgrades is adding this light strip at the bottom of your desk. So during the night, it's gonna light up the floor under your desk and it's gonna look amazing. But yeah, just make sure that the light strip is kinda in the middle of the desk so it's not reflecting on the window behind your setup. And lastly, speaking of windows, if possible, place your setup facing a window so you can rest your eyes every now and then. This is something I actually learned from all your setup videos, but staring at a monitor up close all day can cause nearsightedness, so being able to look at something far away every now and then will help with that. Now the one downside here is that during sunny days, if you're getting sunlight right into your eyes, you're gonna need to have the blinds down, but hey, that's the trade-off. On top of your desk, you're gonna have the centerpiece of the setup, which is your monitor. My current one is the Apple Studio display, but I've tried many others in the past, all the way from a 49-inch monitor to some gaming monitors, and I personally prefer a single monitor setup when it comes to getting work done. On my 49-inch or double monitor setups, I constantly felt the need to take advantage of the screen real estate, which then caused me to get easily distracted due to Slack messages or otherwise my attention moving away from the main task that I was doing. So now I'm just a single monitor type of guy. In a monitor, what I personally look for is of course the resolution. I feel like once you go 5K, it's really hard to go back anymore, as well as the brightness and I also like glossy displays. I don't know, a glossy display just looks a little bit sharper to me and the colors seem more vibrant compared to a matte finish display. And as you can see, my apartment has a ton of natural light coming in, so I need my monitor bright during the day, which is one of the reasons I love the studio display because it goes all the way up to 600 nits of brightness. Now I'm not expecting you to drop two bands on a monitor and there are way cheaper alternatives out there. One that comes to mind is the ultra sharp lineup from Dell, which my old 49 inch monitor was a part of as well, so that lineup is definitely worth checking out if you're searching for a new monitor. Oh and another thing to look for in a monitor is of course the port support. It's genuinely so nice to be able to use my monitor as kind of a dock for my keyboard, audio interface, and my laptop and it frees up a ton of space from my desk. When it comes to docks and cable management stuff, something that's a bit more of a luxury is having a KVM switch. And especially for people like me who have a separate work and a personal laptop, this could be a decent quality of life improvement. Basically with a switch like this, you would be able to switch between your work and personal laptops without needing to move the cable around which connects to your monitor. So right now if I want to switch from my work to my personal laptop or from my personal to work, laptop, I need to move this one Thunderbolt cable between the laptops in order to use the other one. But with the switch, it would be a single button press to switch between the two. If you have some extra cash and don't know what to do with it, then the switch could be a good option. And yeah, the monitor is the one thing I'd allocate a good portion of my budget for, since it's literally the thing that you'll be staring for the most of the day. The next up, we got something a lot of y'all suggested in my setup build video. I finally got a NAS. You know, I'm someone who loves taking a ton of photos and videos, but storage has 
always been an issue for me. I mean, as you can see, I'm starting to accumulate these SSDs like it's candy. So when Ugreen saw me struggling with this, they were kind enough to send me the Ugreen NAS DH2300. If you don't know what a NAS is, it's basically your own cloud storage, where you can store your files locally and safe, which in today's world is becoming more and more important. The one I got can go up to 60 terabytes in storage, which roughly equates to around 20 million pictures, 40,000 videos, or 62 million files. This of course is going to depend on the size of your files, etc. But basically, it's a ton of storage. The setup process took under 10 minutes, and you can authenticate with NFC with your phone. Now, the thing that makes the Ugreen NAS DH2300 stand out are the multi user sharing features. So, let's say you have an album for your family pictures, then you can control which members have rights for uploading and modifying pictures. Or if you work with a team, then you can set permissions for the team members on what they're authorized to do. Also, they have this AI album assistant feature that you can utilize to sort your files into specific categories, for example, places, people, animals. And something that's coming in clutch for me is creating an album for my receipts, since I need to store them for my accounting purposes, but I don't want it taking up space on my phone. Also, uploading data on the NAS is way faster and cheaper than something like Google Drive, for example. And if you want to spin up your own home cloud, then highly recommend checking it out with the first link in the description. And also make sure to use the code down there to get 15% off of your order. And a big thank you to you, Green, for supporting the channel and sponsoring the video. But when it comes to keyboards, I'm a sucker for mechanical ones. Not only can they increase your typing speed, but also, let's be honest, they're fun as hell to use. And in my opinion, if there's a way to make your work feel a little bit more fun, then why not do it? In the past, I was always a clicky switches type of guy, but recently I switched to linear ones when I was doing the upgrade in my setup video. Something about that creamy sound was just too good to pass upon. I wanted to show you the difference between my Keychron Q1 Pro that has their brown switches and the low free flow 84 that has their ghost switches. So the Keychron one is definitely more on the clicky side and you get that feedback when you're pressing down the key. And then on the other hand, the low free one is a bit more on the tucky side. So you kind of have to press the key all the way down in order for the character to register. Obviously sound is also a big difference between the two, so here's a sound test with the Keychron Q1 Pro. And then here's a sound test with the Low Free Flow 84. Unfortunately, it's impossible for me to say what switches work the best for you, so I highly recommend visiting a Best Buy or something and trying a few different options just to see what you like. But please don't be that guy who pulls up to the office with the loudest keyboard. Trust me, some people will be annoyed. Also a quick side note, your keyboard alongside with your mouse make a huge difference to the overall look of your setup. So if you're going for that clean vibe, then highly recommend sticking to a smaller keyboard. Oh, and for the times when you actually need to charge your keyboard, get a coiled cable. Trust me, it makes the desk look miles better than a regular straight one. And speaking of the mouse, this is going to be another essential for the setup. And in the past, I've used some gaming mice and also the MX Master 3, but ultimately I find myself always going back to the MX Master lineup. A lot of people at my work also use the MX Vertical, which is more ergonomic than the MX Master lineup. And to be fair, it does feel pretty good on hand, but the side screen and overall look of the MX Master just feels right to me personally. I'm yet to have any wrist pains even though I'm pretty much glued to my setup, so I can confidently say that the MX Master lineup is really good. One thing that's a non-negotiable for me when it comes to mice is that it needs to be wireless. With my old gaming mouse, I always hated when something got stuck to the cable of the mouse, and yeah, alongside with a wobbly desk, that pissed me off. And below your mouse, you of course need a mouse pad. I think alongside with your cable management and lighting, your mouse pad is one of the cheapest ways to bring that premium feel to your setup. My current one is from Balolo. It's made out of this dark wool type of material. And for a mouse pad, it was pretty expensive. I think around 90 euros, but it just adds so much to the overall feel of the setup. I like making my mouse pad the same color as my secondary color of the setup. And as you can see, the main color of my setup is kind of this light oak color type of thing. And then I have these dark accents everywhere else, so I made my mouse pad dark as well. Personally, I'm a big fan of the contrast that the mouse pad can provide to your setup. Here's what my setup would look like with a white mouse pad. As you can see, everything kind of just blends together. It's still looking extremely clean, but I don't know. I just like the dark vibes a little bit better. Personally, I like having a bigger mouse pad that can fit both my keyboard and mouse. I just think it makes the setup look a bit more symmetrical. Then another luxury I like to have on my desk is a monitor stand, which definitely isn't a must-have 
have, especially if your monitor has a height adjustable stand, but I find it brings nice structure to the overall workspace. And if you go with something similar to mine, you can actually make it quite functional too. Like my mouse pad, the monitor stand is from Belolo. And for example, this MagSafe charger is really nice to have since I don't need any extra cables on my desk for charging my phone. Also having an iPad stand has come in clutch for the rare times when I feel like I need a secondary monitor or just for watching videos and stuff while editing. Also under your monitor stand, you can actually hide things like your laptop and other things you don't want drawing attention on your desk. But yeah, like I said, definitely a luxury, but if done right, it can also serve a purpose. Then on top of the monitor, something I recommend is getting a monitor light, especially if you live in a place where the winters are dark. The monitor light is gonna be lighting up your setup and create less contrast between your bright display and your peripherals. And that's gonna help produce eye strain. And let's be honest, it just looks incredibly good as well. You can get decent monitor lights for quite cheap on Amazon. The one I have is a bit more expensive. It's from BenQ and you get this remote for the light too. But even the cheaper ones will get the job done, no questions about it. For meetings and stuff, it's crucial you have a webcam as well. It's always so awkward when you hop into a meeting and the other person doesn't have a webcam on. It kind of feels like you're speaking to a brick wall. Now my monitor has a decent webcam built in. It's not the best, but investing into a 1080p webcam will for sure have a solid return on investment. And like it or not, it's gonna help when it comes to people taking you more seriously. It's a subconscious thing for the other person in the call, but having good video quality will for sure be a worthy investment. You could also use a professional camera as a webcam nowadays, but I feel like that's a little bit overkill, you know, for your average developer. And something that's even more important than the video quality is gonna be your audio. Especially if you're a product manager or somebody who needs to be reporting to stakeholders, having good audio will be crucial. It's the same thing as with the video quality, but on steroids. I mean, if nobody can hear you, then it doesn't really matter whether they see you or not. You've probably noticed this yourself while watching YouTube videos. If the video quality is bad, but the audio is good, then you'll still give the video a chance if the topic is interesting enough. But if the video quality is great and the audio is dog water, then the video is pretty much unwatchable. And I think the same logic applies here, so investing into a decent microphone is gonna be a solid purchase. You can also just use your headphones if you don't wanna get a separate microphone, as most modern headphones have good mics included. But if you wanna go that extra mile, then highly, highly recommend you look into a good microphone. And lastly, the thing that's gonna determine whether you're gonna be able to walk in 20 years or not is gonna be the chair you sit on while working. Listen, if you're working eight hours a day and sitting on a garbage chair, it's gonna mess you up in the long run. And I'm not saying you need a super expensive chair either, just please don't use a gaming chair. I don't think there's any one size fits all answer here as our bodies are so different, but get something that has a good lower back support and feels comfortable to you. Now mine is the Herman Miller M body, which I've used for, I don't know, maybe two years now. And honestly, even though it's expensive, I wish I got it sooner. In the past, I used the Marcus chair from Ikea, but for me personally, it made my lower back ache like crazy. And I know a lot of people really like that chair, but please don't cheap out on the chair because a good chair can last you over 10 years and the cost per use will be super, super low. But yeah, these are the items that I would consider the most important upgrades for your setup. I didn't include a laptop because I've made so many videos on laptops and quite frankly I feel like the laptop is not a bottleneck for most people and since upgrading your laptop is so expensive I'd personally look at some other items before upgrading my laptop. But with that said happy new year thank you so much for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you in the next one.